So um, as, as we are jumping into our kind of our annual general meeting, we, we're, we often think about ministry and how, how to serve and, and, and how can a person be involved in ministry. And I think lots of times we have questions about that. And so as I was kind of thinking about, okay, for, for this, I just felt the Lord put in my heart that we should talk about ministry this morning. So we are going to look at that. And that we, we know that as followers of Jesus Christ, that we're supposed to be engaged in the work of the Lord. We are called to be engaged in discipleship, which, we, which, which is con really connected to, to ministry. And no matter what kind of ministry we are engaged in, it should in some way be connected to discipleship, right? Um, whether uh, shining Jesus Christ so that people look at, look at Jesus or see Jesus in us and go, hmm, there is something there that I'm missing. There's something there that I'm desiring. And they begin to, you know, begin to follow him and just even just kind of wanting to learn about him. And then at some point, as they're confronted with that, what Jesus Christ has done, ideally they give their heart and their lives to Jesus Christ, and then they, they grow and mature in Jesus Christ. And then as they grow and mature, God brings them ministry, right? G brings them, uh, you know, gives them a heart for being engaged in the work of the Lord. So we know that, and that's really kind of that bigger pers perspective of discipleship. So we know that the good works we are called to in Christ and the ministries we're called to in Christ kind of are, are, are in that field of discipleship. And, so the, uh, and, and we know that we are to be engaged in this. The love of God speaks truth, and the truth of God uh, is, 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 uh, calls, us to, uh, calls us to be engaged in showing people love and sharing love, right? So we know that love, the love of God calls us to this. But then as we read the Word of God, the Word of God calls us, calls us to this as well. So we recognize that God's Word and God's love should compel us towards living in service for Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 15, uh, 58. Therefore, dear, dear, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Paul first challenges, right? He says, Christian, let nothing move you. That's where he starts in this passage. He's talking about, what is he talking about? Nothing move us from what? From where? You get this idea of Paul saying, okay, Christian, like stand firm, right? Be ready. You're going to get pushed against, right? So stand firm. Let nothing move you, right? Um, and, and if we're not paying attention here, Elijah, stand up quick. This won't be on. But if, if he's not ready, right, and I just run at him and just shove him, where is he going? He's going right over. Thanks. You're a perfect uh, uh, help for that e example there. Right? He's just going to go. If he's not ready, if he's not standing firm, if he thinks like, oh, Adam's a good guy and he's not going to shove me over backwards, um, and I go and my purpose is to shove him over backwards, right, uh, he's going to go flying over the pews, right? And I, I was thinking, you know, how many pews could I get him to, uh, to, to go over, Right? But guys, and guys, as followers of Jesus Christ, we need to recognize that there are people and there are a whole, there is a whole army of spiritual forces of darkness that are, are, their intention is to run up and shove us over, to deceive us, to, to get us off balance so that we are, we are not recognizing it and, and flying backwards, right? So Paul says, stand firm. So then we need to be intentionally doing that. And stand firm in what? In the truth of the gospel. If you read that beginning, like the passage before it, and I don't want to uh, take time for that, but he's really talking about recognizing the difference between the image of man and the image of Christ, and we're called to live in the image of Christ. And that one day soon, when we, when we go to heaven, the mortal gives way to immortality in that new glorified body in Christ where we'll be fully in the image, in the glory of Jesus Christ, right? So we are called to stand firm, in the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let nothing move you by faith. Moment to moment, let nothing move you by faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. In the moment, not, not on Sunday, but in the moment, let nothing move you. And then he says this, and always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your work in the Lord is not in vain. Why? Why is your work in the Lord not in vain? Because your work is eternal. Your work in the Lord is eternal. Everything else. How many, how, many, how, many, how many people today 
or this last week, worked on something in their house or on the farm or on their car. Just worked on anything. Like even filling up, even filling your car with fuel. How many people worked on something, okay, this week? Right, we all did, right? We all do. Dishes, food, the fridge. Um, we had a leak in the, we had a leak in our house, right? Uh, so we were working on that. I was working in the shop. We are working on our cars. We're working on stuff. All that stuff's going to go away. None of that stuff's going to remain. The piers you're sitting on, this building, it's all going to rot away to nothing. And if it's still standing uh, at the end of the, the millennial period, it's just going to crumble into nothing and, and we will have no place to be. The heavens and earth will roll up like a scroll and we will only be able to stand in the presence of the God. Of God. That's the only place that we'll be. And then those that are in, in the book of life, we go to be in heaven, into the place that God has prepared for us. And we'll see the new Jerusalem come down. That's what's going to happen. But this will be gone. All the things we work on will be gone. But the work of Christ is eternal because it matters into eternity. So he says, we know that the work of the Lord is not in vain. But did you get that little part in the middle there? He says, always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord. So some questions. First of all, first of, first of all are you letting anything move you this morning? Is there anything in your life that you're finding is moving you off of that solid foundation of Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Are you letting it move you away from what you know and trust he's done for you and what he is doing for you and the promises that he has for you? Are you forgetting those things? Are you letting things move you? He says, let nothing move you. And then two, are you giving yourselves fully to the work of the Lord? Note the word fully. Give yourself fully to the work of the Lord. Is that you? Is that where your heart is at today? Yes, we have stuff to do every day. But in my heart and in my mind is the love and passion for Jesus Christ so overwhelming that I'm like, I, I, I want to give myself fully to the work of the Lord. That's, that's what I want this day to chiefly be. Yes, I have this to do, and I have my job to do, and I have, I have these things to do, but I'm, I chiefly want to give my heart and my life to the work of the Lord. That's where I'm at. His work, His purposes, His way. Is that you? Are you giving yourself fully to the work of the Lord? I pray that you are. I pray that you are giving, and that is your desire, and that's what's happening. And it, but if you're not, I pray that this morning that you check your heart and mind, and you evaluate how you have been living, and honestly look at what you have been living for. Honestly look at what you've been living for. You can tell by a tree. You can tell a tree by its fruit, right? So this morning, I just want to encourage you guys, check your fruit. Check your fruit the last week the last month, the last year? Is it evident that that fruit is of Christ? Is it causing the things that, that Christ causes, that the Spirit causes, joy, peace, patience, kindness, self-control, those kind of things? Is it drawing people closer to Christ? Or is it causing other things? Check your fruit. Note that if you are, if you are and, and, and this is kind of a hard thing, but note that, guys, if you fully give your here. If this is fully Christ's, if you've given this fully to the Lord, your heart, it's easy to fully give yourself here to the work of the Lord. Right? Those are connected. If he is fully, if I've given full, my, my, my heart to him fully, then it's easy to give myself fully to the work of the Lord. But if, I'm to, if I struggle to give myself fully to the work of the Lord, what he's calling me to, Right? then I have to be honest that there's maybe other things in here, right? Maybe other things are more important. Or maybe you, you, you're, you're too scared to do it. Or you expect someone else to do it. Or you just don't have the time for it. But the evidence of if he's fully in here will be seen out here in giving yourself fully to the Lord. Perhaps maybe Jesus is not fully sitting on the throne 
that there's a little bit of Jesus there, but a little bit of other things too. And of course, in our culture, where we are so blessed, it's easy to let the root of me, right? And the I want it this way, or I want it easy, or I need these little roots of kind of self grow up. If I'm not daily dying to self, taking up my cross, right? Following Jesus, trusting Jesus, making sure that he is daily, fully in here. I've given all of this to him. By doing this, right, we don't allow the me monster to live in our days or to just take even little places, right, in our, in our life. Are you giving yourself fully to Jesus Christ daily here? It'll be evidenced how you live giving yourself fully to the work of the Lord around you. We are called to give ourselves fully to the work of the Lord as followers of Jesus Christ who live daily and moment to moment in an ongoing relationship with him through the Holy Spirit. So recognize this is, the, 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 the process of this is me turning to the Spirit of the Lord, to me turning to the, the conscious of the Lord, being conscious about his presence in my life moment to moment. And we see this lots of places, Ephesians 2.20. For we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Galatians 5.13. Oh, here, I'm just going to note for, some, for those that are new. So I have, I have the scriptures up here, so you kind of see where I'm going. And if you want to follow along, um, kind of note, it, once I read one, kind of prepare yourself for the next one, okay? Uh, Galatians 5.13. You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. James 1, uh, 22. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Matthew 5, 16. Just give you a little time to flip there if you're, I'm, I'm reading some of these quickly here. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. And then 1 Peter 4.10. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. Each of you should use whatever gift you have been given to, to, um, you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. We are called to be engaged in the works of the Lord, and we are called in this life to be fully giving ourselves to Jesus Christ as he leads, using the gifts the Holy Spirit has given, one, being, paying, paying attention to the gifts that we've been given, but then also, two, how we've been equipped. Right? As, as we are being equipped, guys, we are being given something from the Lord. So as we sit Sunday after Sunday and learn about Christ, we are being given something for us, but also for others. We are being equipped so that we can share and give to others that which we are learning. That's what we are being equipped by. So what the Holy Spirit gives, but also what we are being equipped by. But, but note, the Word of God also calls us and warns us against that we're not supposed to just be doing stuff and claiming it's for Jesus. So this is where ministry kind of like the Bible, you, you get into the ministry in the, in the Word of God, and it's like, well, this is hard because we're called to be engaged in ministry, but then there's verses like, like, like um, Matthew 7, 21. Not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only those who do the will of the Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy? in your name, and in your name drive out demons, and in your name perform many miracles. See, there's, there's like this kind of other half to it. Well, then you're telling me, Pastor, that I should go be engaged in the work of the Lord, but then there's also these passages in Scripture where Jesus warns that just going and doing stuff and claiming it's for Jesus is not, is, it's, those guys get sent to hell. What it, what, what's the answer then, right? This is what I mean. We don't get to just decide what we want to do for Jesus and then do it, claiming it's for Jesus. No, we are to keep in step with the Holy Spirit and do what the Holy Spirit in Jesus Christ leads us to. 
That's what we're called to do. We do it, and then we do it not on our own and just claiming that this is for Jesus. We do it with Jesus. Being consciously aware that he is a part of this, that he is, he is doing this. He's the one that's going to bring the power in this. It's not me. I'm just obeying, and I'm doing this with Jesus who is present here with me, right? In this, we first need to know Jesus as our Lord and Savior and walk with him. But we need to be learning and then listening to his voice and seeking his voice as the Holy Spirit leads. Right? And the Holy Spirit leads through prayer. Right? We've talked about this before. We talk about this lots. The Holy Spirit leads three ways. Through prayer, through his holy word, and through his Holy Spirit-filled holy people. Right? That's how God leads us. We, don't, we just don't go do and say, well, this is in the name of Jesus because some people told me to do it. Right? We listen. We do the will of the Father in heaven. And of course, we only do the will of the Father in heaven, and we engage in the will of the Father in heaven because in Jesus Christ, we have a relationship with God and the Father in heaven. And Jesus, Jesus says, and we do that, and, and we, so, so we do it in Christ and with Christ through the Spirit. Matthew 7, 21 and 25 not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only those who do the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, we did, not pro did we not prophesy in your name? And in your name drive out demons, and in your name perform many miracles. Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. Therefore, anyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice... To recognize there's still a practice we need to do. Yes, we don't just go do stuff and claim it's for Jesus, but, but, but we are called to put his words into practice. So it's still about hearing God's word and doing it, but it's hearing from the Lord through a relationship with him as he leads us through his word and prayer and his spirit-filled holy people. And how do we know if it's God? Right? If the Spirit comes and tells you and impresses on your heart, this is what you should be doing, how do we know? Well, we know that the Spirit of God will never contradict the Word of God. And so when we hear a Spirit and we have a nudging in our heart to be like, hey, is this godly? God, should I go share Jesus with, this, with my neighbor? Should I go, um, if this person asks me for money, should I give it to them? And I feel the prompting that I should, what should I do? I should go to the Word. Ideally, I should know the word so well that, like, we know passages like, when someone asks you for money, what do you do? You give. When someone asks you for a shirt, what do you do? You give. Right? If someone asks you to go with one mile, what do you do? Actually, actually, you don't just give them their shirt. You should give them their coat also. If, if, God, if, 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 if someone asks you to go one mile, what do you do? You go two. Right? We should know the word so well that when the Spirit prompts us, we know that is of the word. This is of the word. This person just punched me. I want to punch them back. I feel like something in my heart is telling me, punch them back, right? And then I'm like, yeah, but I know the word. I know the word of God. And I know that spirit is not of Christ. That's probably me. And so I'm going to die to that. And I'm going to live in Christ. What am I going to do? Obviously, I'm going to start praying for them. And I'm going to figure out how to deliberately do good to them, right? So, so, so uh, how do we know that a brother or sister in Jesus Christ who's saying, hey, you know what? This is something you should think about. I think you're gifted in this. Or someone, a brother and sister in Jesus Christ who says, you know what? I don't think this is good for you. How do we know that that brother and sister is speaking from the Spirit? One, we look at the fruit of their life, but then we also look at the Word of God. We filter it through the Word of God. The Word of God becomes our key foundation. Right? That's why knowing and living the Word of God is so important. We don't just listen to the people telling us, this is what you're supposed to do, that's what you're supposed to do. Okay, so I'm going to go do that in the name of Jesus. Sure. No, 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 I do it as I listen, as I walk in Christ. That's what I do. Don't be deceived. And praise the Lord that by His Spirit, His Word, and His people, we can know the will of God for our lives. Praise the Lord that He speaks to us Let's remember to be engaged in that. Going back to verse 24 there, 
Therefore, everyone who hears the words of mine and puts them into practice is like a man who built his house on the rock. The rain came and the, st and the streams rose and the wind blew and, and beat against that house, yet it did not fall because it had foundation, it, because its foundation was on the rock. We also know what happens to the house or to, to the house that a person builds that is not built on the rock, right? When, it, when hard times happen, it collapses. It collapses. So don't just do what you think or do what, you, what people tell you. Walk in the presence and in the hearing, in the knowing of Jesus Christ. And then I want to encourage you guys, are you cultivating this kind of daily relationship as you walk with Jesus in the Holy Spirit? That you're in his word and that you're in prayer, seeking his will, seeking his way. So yes, doing and giving yourselves fully, but doing what he calls you to from a place of, listen now, intimate relationship, of trusting, sharing, seeking, and hearing God's will. Is that where you're engaged from? Because you know what, guys? You know what, guys? You know what this does? This guards us as a church. Well, I'm up here preaching. Why aren't you up here preaching? That's junk. Why do I have to spend all the time preparing messages, and you, none of you guys do? Well, obviously, you're not as holy as me. Right? Or why is the neighbor not doing this and I have to do this? Well, clearly, they're not speaking in tongues because I'm more holy than them, right? So it's not about what you're supposed to do when I'm following Jesus Christ and I'm being led by the Spirit. It's about what I'm supposed to be doing. You're not my master. Your brother and sister in Jesus Christ sitting beside you, they're not your master. Jesus Christ is. And as you're walking and listening to him, do what he says. Don't just do whatever you think makes you look righteous or you should be doing and claiming it's for Jesus. Walk in a relationship in Jesus Christ. Listen to what he is telling you. Because ministry like that will bear fruit. It will for his glory. It will bear fruit for his glory. Jesus said, and what is this kind of language? This is abiding in Christ, remaining in him. John 15, 1 to 6, I am the vine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that, that, that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in me, in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up and thrown into the fire and burned. So we are warned here to abide or remain in Christ. Be consciously aware of his leading and his presence. And just because we are a part of the tree does not mean we can go do whatever we want and claim it's for Jesus. And of course, we get to this place of abiding and remaining in Christ by leaning and growing in him. And we get that from passages like uh, 2 Peter 1, 5 to 8, and uh, passages like really simply, uh, 2 Peter 3, 18, grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So then, if you are not giving yourself fully to the work of the Lord, why? Check your heart. Check your fruit. If Jesus is fully on, your throne, on the throne in your heart, it's going to be easy to fully give your life to him around you and to obey what he's calling you to. Oftentimes, I think sometimes the problems that we have in terms of failing to give ourselves fully to the Lord is that we, um, we've slipped from seeking and knowing his will. We slip from that intimate relationship with him. And then, and then what we try to do and to, to recover is we just start, you know, doing stuff we think we should do instead of seeking back into that place of intimate relationship with Jesus Christ so that we're hearing his voice and hearing his leading. Or sometimes things sneak into our life 
that we give more authority in our heart to than we should. We elevate things higher in our heart than they should. And what we need to do is go run to Jesus and say, God, you know what? I just check in my heart here. I'm checking my fruit. And it's, it's, uh, it's a little lacking. Father, am I doing the things you've called me to? Help me hear your voice that I might know your will. And help me be courageous in them. Help me be courageous in them. I want to be engaged in giving myself fully to you. Lord, show me why that's not happening. Why am I struggling so hard to give my time, my, my money, my, 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 my attention, my, my energy fully to the work of the Lord? Lord, is there something in my heart, right? We just run to him and say, God, rekindle this, this closeness with you. I want to hear your voice that I might know your will and be engaged in your good things. Applicationally speaking, I want to give us just a couple warnings, okay? Just like really pra practical. So first, remain in the leading of the Spirit, right? When it comes to ministry, when it comes to good works, remain in the ministry of the Spirit. If you don't know what your ministry is, God has not brought, uh, brought it to you or made it clear to you on, uh, in, in an area that you should be acting, then prayfully wait on the Lord. Get into prayer. Be asking Him, God, show me. Show me what you would have for me here. And don't try, because this is something that we try to do, don't try to take or elbow yourself into a ministry that the Lord has not given you. If the Lord has not given it to you, then just, just be okay with that. Right? Seek Him. He will give you. He will lead you. He will bring what He wants you to have. Right? And He will put it in your open hands. So have your hands open and just like, God, I want to do what you want. I want to do what you want. So you don't have to try and grab for it. Just have your hands open. When God's ready, he will put it into your hands. And from the passages of scripture um, that we'll read in a moment, guys, if, if your hands are open and you are in, your, in, your in Christ and it's bearing fruit, he will give you more. He will give you more. Don't try to grab it. Just have your hands open. Wait for the Lord. Remember what, king, what happened to King Saul, right? When, when Samuel was supposed to do the offering, remember that story? Uh, first Samuel, when Samuel was supposed to do the offering and, and the army was there and they were supposed to do an offering and dedicate the, the army to the Lord before they went and attacked and, and Samuel wasn't coming. He said, I'll be there in seven days, but he wasn't here yet and some of the men were leaving. So Saul decided, okay, I will do what Samuel's supposed to do. So he, he takes the place of Samuel, he takes Samuel's ministry and he offers um, um, basically sacred offering to the Lord when he shouldn't have. And you know what he lost? He lost his throne for that. God decided to choose David, a man after his own heart, rather than giving the descendants of the throne to Saul. It was actually a pretty serious thing in God's eyes. Open hands. And then too, also, if God wants to take it, open hands. You don't need to hold on to it. If God's giving it to you, he will place it in your hands. If God's taking away from you, don't hold on. Let it go. Secondly, as you're doing ministry, um, do it as the Lord calls you to. Don't copy others or think that because you're doing it, you can do it however you want either. Right? So you hear this preached a lot, right? Like, don't do it the way someone else would do it. Do it how you would do it. And yes, I agree with that in part. But also, don't just say, okay, this is my ministry, I'm doing it my way. Do it as the Lord is leading you to. So that means, yes, I'm not going to do it how everyone else does it. Well, because I read a book and this is how it's done, or because I saw someone do this, or I really respect this guy and he does it this way, so I'm going to do it that way. Don't do that. But also, on the other hand, don't just do what you want to do. Do what the Lord would have you do. Do it the way the Lord would have you do it. So that means he's going to give you the ministry, seek him for that, but then also seek him and rest in him how he's going to have you do it. And then however he calls you to do it, remember he's gifting you and he has prepared you, then don't be fearful of that. So often we bend to the fear of man because, well, that church is doing it this way, so we should do it that way, or, 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 or uh, that person wants us to do it, so we should do it. Don't do that. Do it the way the Lord leads you to. Right? Fear God, not man. Do it the way he's calling you to do it. 
Lastly, if you don't have a clear ministry that the Lord has led you to, wait and set your heart on being equipped and learning from the Lord and those he has given you to learn from and study his holy word, right? Be seeking the Lord in prayer, learning in the word, growing from biblical God-fearing men and women around you. Be, be, be getting ready. Chances are you're not ready yet for what God has for you. In the meantime, shine Jesus and be in prayer waiting for God to lead it. He will lead you into it when it's time and when you're ready for what he has. God will bring you what he wants you to walk in. And when he does, don't fear man, don't fear failure. Trust in Jesus and abide in him and do it for his glory. And I'm going to say this, guys. Oftentimes, God will bring us something and we don't think we're ready. That's another danger. Sometimes we try to grab things that aren't ours, but other times when God says, okay, this is what I'm calling you to do, we're like, nope, I can't. There's still too much sin in me. There's still too much, right? Remember Moses in the burning bush? Remember that, right? That story. Well, I can't speak very well. Well, I, I can't. There's fear often. Guys, if God leads you to it, do it courageously. For a time, I'm just going to talk about this last. In Matthew 25, 14, Jesus tells a parable. And uh, it's about, it's about um, a, a master who gave three, or he gives three of his servants bags of gold. And when he comes back, after a long time, I'm going to start in verse 19, after a long time, the master of the servants returned and settled, according, um, and settled accounts with them. The man who had received five bags of gold brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five bags of gold. See, I have gained five more. His master replied, well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. The man with two bags of gold also came. Master, he said, you entrusted me with two bags of gold. See, I have gained two more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will, I will put in your charge of, I'll put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Then the man who had received one bag of gold said, master, I knew that you are a hard man, harvesting where you have not sowed and gathering where you have not scattered seeds. So I was afraid and went out and hid your gold in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. His master replied, you wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I, I, I harvested where I had not sown and gathered where I have not scattered seed. Well, then you should have put my money on deposit with the banker so that when I returned, I would have received it back with interest. So take the bag of gold from him and give it to the one who has 10 bags for who, whoever has will be given more and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them. And throw, and throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Man, a very challenging parable that we don't hear often preached on, but it is in God's word. The, for, the, the thing is, don't be fearful, but recognize how much you have been given. You've been given the spirit of the living God who wants to empower you and equip you to bear fruit, right? As followers of Jesus, let's be walking in Christ, fully giving ourselves to the work of the Lord, seeking his will and his calling for us. And guys, if our heart's in the right place, don't worry. He's with you. Go bear fruit, right? Go serve. You're not alone. Let's pray.